Hi, Jay. How are you, sir? It's I'm good doing to see. well. How are you? I am good. All right. We feeling good? Ready to go? I am. It's been a okay. crazy weekend. So you want to back talk to about work? It? Back to work. You want to talk about your weekend experience of losing a cat? Right. I mean, oh I don't my wanna, god! I don't want to open up the box, but it's been. Ah. A, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, Vivian ran away, and it it went nuts. <laughs> Okay. Um, you know, one of my questions for the JBK on air questionnaire uh, is cats or dogs. So are you more of a cat or dog person? Oh, I think that's obvious cats. Okay. I didn't know if uh, you had a dog too, you know? No, was... no. I, I, I like dogs, but um, I think my schedule has always aligned more with that. My schedule doesn't make sense to have a dog because, you know, you, got to take it outside and spend time with the dog. Um, and I think also my personality is very much more cat-like. So it all, it just, the cats have just made more sense. No, I, I always thought the litter box was a was a plus for cats that so you don't have to necessarily take them outside to do their business, you know? Yeah, but you got to clean the litter box out as the yeah, problem. That's, right. that's the problem. That, that's the other half in it. Um, yeah. Where are you calling from today, sir? Say that again. Where are you calling from today? I am in Houston. Okay, awesome. We uh we originally met each other at uh, Cumulus in that cluster uh, here in Indianapolis. So in 2015, 2014, mm. what year were you there? I want to say I was there um, 18 through like 19, and then I went over to... Okay, because uh, I left in the summer of 2018, so... Okay. Uh, well, that, that whole, you know, that was such a, um, uh, my, my time in that building in an Indianapolis was, was so cool career wise. Um, but it's also, I think so much has happened since then. And, and you're probably the same where it's like, that was like five lifetimes ago <laughs> where it's like, I think uh -huh. about those times and, and I was actually talking to someone that, that works in that building now that did not work in that building when I was there. Um, and, and just, it's, it's just, it's like anything else, you know, things evolve and change and move on and it's mm -hmm. life, life goes on without us. So. Yeah. One, one of the cool stories that came out of there as a result of your direction uh, was 93.9 the beat, right? It had the, uh, yeah. it made the New York times a national publication talked about. We did. It. We did. Yeah. Tell me more about that. What happened? Uh, so that station, um, that that frequency ha had always been uh, cursed, per se, where every couple of years there would be a format change and, and nobody could, could figure out what to do on it. And people blamed the signal or they blamed this or they blamed that. Um, and, and we, I, when I, I moved to Indianapolis, uh, the station was I-94. It was a top 40 station. Um, and we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into that station and to try and to make it work from evolving music to changing talent to, I mean, we did everything we could to try to make it work. And I think even towards the end, we probably had it sounding the best that it ever sounded. Mm-hmm. But, but the market was too crowded. You had two top 40s. You had uh, the mix at that time was was very pop leaning and very current as well. And and that station had just been through so many struggles that there was no it, there was no pie left for it at the end of the day. So right. um, the, the conversation was had to, to change the direction on it. And then it's then you get into the conversation of what do you do? And um, I'm going to be 100% transparent. I am the furthest from a hip hop guy. <laughs> so when when that conversation started, um, I, and we we did that uh, the week before Christmas, uh, a few weeks before Christmas. Um, so that conversation started in like October of 20. We did that in 2014, I believe, uh, 2014 or 2015. Um, and I was scared because I'm going through this playlist of potential songs. And I'm like, I don't know half of these songs. Um, but but we launched that station um, in December, uh, a couple of weeks before Christmas. And the response from Indianapolis was insane. 
it was music that that so many people grew up with um you know the, the technical term i guess you would say is classic hip hop um we we didn't really hone in on that term we honed in more on throwbacks uh, mm -hmm. because it did lean a little pop as well uh which pissed some people off um that the diehard hip hop fans but but the ratings exploded our i think the the headline in one of the radio trades was worst to first uh, we literally finished the month of November in dead last place on I-94 in the market. And then the following month, we're in first place. And we rode that wave for several months. And then it 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 uh, started to level out a little bit. And I, I, I still believe that station could still be here today had the original plan that we put into place been followed through with. And mm -hmm. uh, there was... There was other factors at work that that uh, is the reason that station is no longer here. But yeah, that the station was was a really cool time, and we had some really cool people on it. Um, Miss E Class and um, Zach Babb was on it originally, and then Justin Love was on it towards the end of its life. Um, JC did mornings for us for a while, who actually now works in my building in Houston. Oh wow, uh, so yeah. that was a full circle moment. Uh, <laughs> Be, being in the same building with him. Um, and then we had uh, Rusty Redenbacher and uh, Indiana Jones. The late Indiana Jones was on with us for a while too. So it was it was a really cool time. And I think it invoked so much emotion. Um, so it's cool you bring that station up because it, it's, it was a really cool memory and, and one of my highlights of my career for sure. Um, just to give people an idea, I think they had Tupac, Biggie, I mean, 90s rap and, and stuff mm -hmm. that people don't typically hear now. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So I didn't know. Uh, well, you know, what's interesting about that is uh, the, the station I'm on th th that I, I do now in Houston is is a pop station. It's very similar to what a ZPL would be in Indianapolis. And but we do lean very what we call in the industry gold. And in those songs, the the Biggie and the Tupac come back so strong there's so much passion with them even with yeah. you know well with women in their 40s because that that's i mean i'm 40 now but that that's the stuff that we grew up with um and it's it still invokes that emotion so it's i, I think you'll hear even a top 40 station playing uh yeah. a big year a tupac song not as much as we did on the beat but you'll hear it randomly you know pop up because the older I hate to use the term older because I'm referring to myself, but but that upper end of the demo, we it still invokes that passion there. Um, I wore this for you. It's my Stevie Ray Vaughan uh, shirt. He re he died <laughs> in uh, August of '90, uh, so uh -huh. we're coming up on his death date. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I'm no longer here. But uh, one of the best things to come out of Texas was SRV. I'll ask you, having lived, I, I don't know how long you've been there, but I imagine you. I've been uh, here, uh, I got here in May of 23, so it's been a year and three months now. Okay, so you might have some time to uh, indulge in some of these things. Uh, favorite okay. local breakfast place, if you've got one. Local breakfast place. Um, I think Whataburger has to be it. If you've never experienced Whataburger, whether for for lunch or dinner or their breakfast. I mean, their breakfast legit tastes homemade. I know it's a chain, but it's a Texas chain. Uh, it looked like the sausage. The first time I had one of their sausage patties, it, I legit had like flashbacks to being at my great grandma's house as a kid. Like it has that homemade sausage. It, like it doesn't taste like a fast food okay. sausage. So awesome. if you're in Texas or anywhere where Whataburger is, that's, that's the place to go. Pizza place in Houston or Texas. Uh, Houston would be Star Pizza is really good. Okay. How how would you compare it to something else? I mean, is there a comparison? I don't know what to compare it to. It's just the sauce is good. The crust is good. It's a cool little vibe. Um, yeah, I mean, it's no Pizza King, but... <laughs> yeah, nothing is, man. But right? No, there's no pizza. That's the only <laughs> that, I mean, every time I go back home, we have to have Pizza King, so... yeah. Um, also, I, I just want to mention this since he's po uh, in pop culture all the time. Joe Rogan has like a steakhouse. Have you been to his steak? I have not been there. No, I've not been there. Okay. Well, is that was, in Houston? I think there's one in Austin. I don't know how far that is. It's a big So steak. Texas is, 
Texas is really interesting where it's like, it literally, like, I mean, everybody's so siloed. So, I mean, Austin is its own state in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's its own state. Um, and then Houston is so different from Dallas and, and it, there's this whole Texas vibe, but every major city has its own vibe too. Um, which is really cool. Um, have you enjoyed any, uh, I don't know if you're a sports fan, but you go to Rockets games or any of the sports stuff. I'm going to be on, I have not been to any of the sports. I'm not a big sports guy. And I, okay. I have no excuses to why I haven't been to any of the games because we have a uh, sports station here in our cluster that's that's the big sports station in town and they have uh, the partnership with the texans so they have a they're at all the games and we have access to, i i need to go to a game eventually and that's that's my goal but well i don't know if you're loyal to indianapolis at all but indianapolis is in houston's division so you'll get to see the colts play if you uh ask for it i'm sure I, and I, uh, know, when they're in town i'll go to that game specifically yeah well, <laughs> it'll be like a, an internal division <laughs> And a personal shout out to uh, Vanessa Richardson, who's the sideline reporter for the Houston Rockets. She's uh, she's a friend of mine. So oh, I want cool. to mention that, cool. too. All right. Um, so I, I, I've been an air personality. Uh, it's not an easy job, as many people might think it is. Uh, how would how would you describe a normal day uh, for your jobs and duty? You, have to do. Uh, you know, I have, I have several different responsibilities here at the station, uh, in addition to being on air. And, and the other one is overseeing the music and, and making sure that the music is scheduled the right way and all that. But uh, as far as being an on-air personality, um, I think that's a job that never really stops. And it's a job that's that's 360 now, where yes, there's a certain amount of time that you're on the air, but it, 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 it I mean, especially with social media and, and, you know, your Instagram, your Facebook and all the other channels, I mean, that's one more way to interact with your audience. So it never turns off. Um, but I guess like my, my day would be, you know, getting to the station, um, show prepping as we call it, where you kind of, you know, kind of gather what you're going to talk about that day and, um, making sure I'm abreast with like what's going on locally. And I don't like to get into like celebrity gossipy stuff. I know a lot of top 40 personalities do, and, I'll hit on the big stuff, but I think by the time that the listener has found me, they already know what the hell's going on. And at the end of the day, does anybody really care that so-and-so sleeping with so-and-so? I mean, may maybe somebody does. I, I don't. Yeah. I think the people that cared already know that, you know, yeah. John Mendez is not dating so-and-so anymore or whatever. So. Well, and, and with Twitter and, all these different things. I mean, people have access to so much media now. What do you think the job of a radio personality is in 2024? You know, the word influencer gets mentioned a lot. Um, yeah. and, and we hear that word a lot, especially in regards to like, uh, you know, these people on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter that are, so it's, I mean, you scroll through Twitter, it's like watching the home shopping network. Sometimes everybody's, hawking a product or something but i think i think a radio personality is the original influencer mm -hmm. um and so i think it's like i said i mean it's, it's a 360 job now it's not just on the air it has to be you have to expand that to so many different aspects of your life um with social media and digital and um see so yeah, i think I, I think the term influencer is kind of over overtaking on-air personality now i think that's what we all are we're the original influencers is it hard to disconnect sometimes having to con be connected <laughs> i mean it's very it's very hard to disconnect and and especially in a time like right now um with with politics and with social issues being the this the, the forefront of everything you know you turn on the news you open a website you open your facebook feed or everything and um mm. you know it's hard to have that opinion and not have that opinion right uh because it, you, you really border on the what is should i talk about this should i not talk about this am i am i alienating an audience if i mention this but at the same time am i not doing my job since i have a platform to not mention it 
it's a right. very thin line to to walk well and um i know that uh one of the personalities who recently retired from wfms was married to someone who was uh on the news uh, mm-hmm. is is it easier to marry someone or or be with someone in the industry or does it have to be a different career path <laughs> Look, I think there's a reason that the majority of us are single or divorced or uh, <laughs> or, or whatever. I, I think if you're with, I have, I have never been in a long term relationship with someone in the industry. I've I've dated someone in the television side of it when I was in Indianapolis, but um, I think the only benefit of that is they also understand the demands of being in the public eye and they understand the nonstop demands. Uh, and you know, in the case of, you know, talking about, uh, Jim Denny and Mimi, I mean, they mm-hmm. were married. I mean, they've been married for ever. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's this perfect marriage or it appears to be a perfect marriage. Um, and, and maybe that's part of it is they both understood the demands that each other's careers brought them, you know? So, you know, my, uh, real uh, in- relationship that I was in when I was in Indianapolis that ended right around the same time my job in Indianapolis ended. So that was a, a full circle moment, or a, you know, a, a universe telling me to it's time for a change moment. Mm-hmm. Um, was that person couldn't understand the time that that, that the job it's storming here and the power is flickered. Uh, that no, that also happens a lot in Houston, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah. But the. Uh, I, I think a lot of people don't understand the demands on the job. So, you know, that that's why my relationship ended is that that person didn't understand why I couldn't turn it off because he was a, a manager for a bank. And, you know, at five, five thirty, you lock the door that the bank, it doesn't go with you. Like, I mean, unless something, you know, a catastrophe happens in that building after hours, there's, there's right. no reason to, you, you can't, there's nothing else to do. The bank's closed. Um, so I think people outside of the industry don't, don't fully understand that. Does it feel like you're on call with with your responsibilities now? (laughs) Okay. It is. It is. I, I don't get the 3 a.m. phone call. I used to get a lot of 3 a.m. phone calls in Indianapolis. Um, I don't get those here. Thank God. But (laughs) okay. Yeah. Got always got to have the ringer on so you can hear it. Um, unfortunately, all right. Uh, just to get an idea of uh, how you grew up, what, what was some of your, like, your favorite music that you would listen to? My favorite music? I've always been like a pop guy. And um, you know, you're know, you going to make fun of me. And you may not even know who this is because you're five years old and I'm 105 years old. I might. Um, oh. All right. I, I grew up with a lot of like 80s pop. So okay. late 80s pop. So the Debbie Gibsons and the Tiffany's and new kids on the block and stuff like that uh and and and, you know the debbie gibson especially uh is still still a diehard fan to this day so it's weird of of those people that i kind of that also were kind of kids when they were starting their careers so we kind of grew up with them you know Mm -hmm. that's really what i grew up with and that's why it was so weird with the beat was i knew some of this music but i didn't grow up with it you know and um, so I was discovering a lot of this music that meant so much, you know, I was discovering this music that to a lot of people was, we were recreating memories. I was discovering it for the first time. Yeah. Um, the first concert I can recall going to was with my parents, James Taylor, uh, oh, which, wow. which, yeah, I mean, I, I like having that as, as well, a so you grew up with a little more like music, music but not like bubble yeah. gum manufactured pop stars. <laughs> No, my my dad wanted to be Jimi Hendrix growing up. I think you know that, that, that was that was his idea of, of having a great time. You know, so, I bet it was fun growing up in your house. <laughs> oh, it was the best time ever. I don't know if, uh, um, oh God, Ike and Jonesy's was still there when you were uh, in Indianapolis. But my dad yeah. was the it was the um, rock and roll bar in Indianapolis. Ike and Jonesy's off of uh, yes, Jackson, yes, yes, off of uh, Jackson Street. My dad was the uh, the house band there for. Oh, cool! Years. Yeah, so really Great. fun. Uh, would play Santana and and soul stuff. I mean, it was it was a cool band. But <laughs> um, yeah, let me ask you: Did your uh, what did your parents do when you were growing up? That's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so uh, my uh, 
my my parents divorced when I was very young. Uh, I was okay. like a year and a half, two years old. Um, and um, my mother remarried when I was three or four. And he joined the military shortly after they got married. So I grew up in southern Indiana near Louisville on the, the Indiana side of the bridge in Jeffersonville. Okay. Um, so right after uh, they got married, he enlisted in the, the Navy. And we moved to um, Virginia Beach. He was stationed in Norfolk. So we, we moved to that area. Um, and then uh, that was in 80. My sister was born in 80. I was born in 84. My sister was born in 87. They moved there in like 88 or 89. And then the Persian Gulf, you know, war started in 89 and 90. Uh, so he was was deployed um, in, in during that. I don't know exactly where he went somewhere um but he was deployed during that they after he got out of the military we moved back to the louisville area um and i was uh like 10 or 11 then but to answer your question he was in the military and then went to work and did and i think he they're now divorced but i think he still does like industrial factory work i don't know um but my mother uh was more of just like office type stuff um so not you know no rock stars in my family like your dad <laughs> um but just you know just normal jobs, um I guess. well and I, we moved a lot as a kid i guess that's what i was kind of getting at it's no surprise uh either that my parents were uh, kind of happy when i said you know i want to try and be famous i want to try and be <laughs> their personality um were your parents supportive of this career of being on the radio and everything yes yes uh my mother my mother's always been very supportive of my career. Um, I start. I actually started in radio. I, I, I knew this was always what I wanted to do. And um, when we were in Virginia Beach, when my stepfather was deployed, um, there was a uh, a radio station there. And it's actually owned by the company now that I work for. So it's a, a now a sister station. So it's a, a weird kind of full circle moment when people talk about that station. But um, there was a station in Virginia Beach that did a event uh, for military families and for families that that um, had a parent deployed overseas. Uh, they did a, a party at um, Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, and, and I remember us going to the radio station to get the packet or do something before this event that we were going to do. Mm -hmm. um and that station the the studio was in like um i guess you call it like a fishbowl in the lobby so when you went into the lobby you know you're seeing the receptionist and then you can see the glass studio and and i was five or six years old and i just was fascinated by the fact that there was two or three people sitting in that room talking into a microphone and their voices floating through the air and you know into the radio <laughs> yeah. um and that's kind of where i knew this is what i want to do and and I think the receptionist thought, you know, she could tell that I was mesmerized by what was happening, you know, in the side room and asked if I wanted to to see the inside of it. Um, and so they let me go in the studio. And that was Z104 in Virginia Beach. And um, uh, and I was hooked from there. And I just always knew. So my first actual job job in radio, I was 15. We had a, a TV station uh, in, our, in our high school. And I was involved in that all the way from freshman year through senior year. Um, but I did, um, I started in this radio station in Jeffersonville, Indiana, and I would was working like six or seven hours a week. Uh, they ran uh, church services on Sunday mornings. It was a big <laughs> band and right. uh, like 50s and 60s music station, but they were in these church services on, on Sunday morning. And so I actually went in and, and the services were on cassette tape. And so we got, you know, I got to, you know, actually run the board and play them on cassette. I think one came on reel to reel and one may have been live and it ran through, this is how like low budget the station was. The The service ran through the phone. So <laughs> like oh, they, no. you know, they bought a block of time and I don't know if there was a phone up there by the preacher or if the microphone, you know, that the preacher was using into the sound system was somehow routed into the phone, but we played the <laughs> church service through the phone for 30 minutes um and it's you know a little bitty am station but um yeah so to answer your question they've always been very supportive my mother would you know wake up early on sunday mornings to drive me to the station and then when i got 
a job with Clear Channel in Louisville uh, when I was six. I think I, I they could legally hire me at 16. And so right after my 16th birthday, I got a job with them and I thought I had made it because um, I was on the air. And uh, yeah, she would drive me, you know, over to work every every weekend. So, yeah, they've always been yeah. very supportive. My grandmother, um, who passed away in 99, uh, used to, it was very close to my grandmother. And she used to actually wake up early on Sunday mornings because I, I got to read the weather in between um, the Billy Graham service and whatever other church service there was. I got to read the weather forecast. And so my grandmother would wake up early and listen to me. I don't know. She was always very supportive. But um always told me that I should go to college and become a lawyer because I would make a lot more money uh yeah. as an attorney or a lawyer and um I I did not do that and and probably would be making a lot more money than what I'm currently <laughs> making well I can testify there, there ain't yeah, a ton of money in radio but no there's there's no money in radio there's <laughs> that's that's the down part of it right Although, I, you know, I grew up, uh, my first experience and exposure to the business was uh, my dad was part of the Bob and Tom band. So, you know, oh, okay. uh, with the Bob and Tom show, he would he was on the air and uh, would do the live days. So, you know, seeing Bob and Tom as a young kid, I'm like, I got to at least try this and see if it works. Yeah, out. yeah. But, yeah. And I mean, they, with those guys, too, I mean, you're talking about like. I mean, people don't like the word legend, but but living legends, living icons, you know, that. um yeah. yeah, I mean the, that those guys are at the top of their still at the top of the game, you know. As well, far as and the, uh, talking about perfect timing, I mean the fact that they get there in, I, I think eighty three, right before the Colts get there. I mean it was it was a perfect storm for them to ascend to where they are. So they they definitely put the work in. And they you know what's everything. funny? Yeah, mentioning them is uh, so when we worked together in Indianapolis, um, the the reason I left Indianapolis was um my my position was i think what's the word? my position was eliminated i think is ah, the actual right. term that was used um and so i was was off for six months and then ended up going back to cumulus uh a few months later um but in that downtime uh took some time off to kind of get because i again a, a six-year relationship had also just ended so this job that was my relationship and a romantic physical relationship had just ended so literally everything i knew was over um so I, you know i did the whole soul searching whatever and, and talked to several different companies there was a few companies that immediately reached out when it was released that i was was no longer with the company um but getting to bob and tom one of the people that reached out to me was in uh traverse city michigan and um which is where they moved to indianapolis from right and it was uh, a small mom and pop group. Um, the, it was still a family owned and it still is a family owned radio station. And I think they, they have five or six stations up there, but long, but, but connecting to Bob and Tom is when we were talking about, uh, you know, me working in Indianapolis for so long, she told me my dad is the one that fired them. You know, he's the <laughs> okay. one that told them this show sucks. This show will never amount to anything. <laughs> and, okay. uh, and then, you know, however many years later you know they're the biggest morning show in in radio right now yeah. um so i i remember asking her i was like well, did your dad ever regret that before he <laughs> before he passed away did and she was like no he's glad he fired him because they wouldn't be where they are if he hadn't which is you know, again it's that full circle everything happens for a reason but uh, it was funny to, to talk to her to be like yeah they worked here before they were millionaires um, yeah no uh <laughs> When Bob talked to me in college, I had the honor of talking to him on my morning show. He mm -hmm. said that, you know, he, he went in there on, on a whim of like, and he said, read this script and we'll record a tape for you and get back to you. I mean, it was on a total chance that he even ended up meeting Tom. So perfect storm ended up working out very everything well. Happens, for them. Everything yeah. happens the way it's supposed to. That's it, right. It all, and the timing may not always align with what you or I want, but the universe has its own plan yeah. and its own timing for you. All right. I don't mean to scare you with this one, but no, no. Um, I have, I still have nightmares of, you know, I'll walk into a radio station and I forget the code to the on air door and like, it's about to be on the air and I don't, you know, I can't get there. Do you have any like nightmares that are recurring with the, with radio? <laughs> any nightmares? Um, 
everybody talks about like the um the the dream of dead air or whatever i've never had that dream before i always thought that was a weird dream to have i've never had that nightmare i think my nightmare maybe you're gonna make me get vulnerable for a minute jimmy um, be vulnerable. It's fine. <laughs> I, think, I think my nightmare in radio look we want people to like us right we're, we're we get paid to talk we get paid to talk and share our lives and and at the end of the day the audience is either going to connect and like you or they're not <laughs> it's just <laughs> the way it is uh -huh. um and i've been in both of those scenarios where the audience has really connected and liked me and the ratings shown that and then for whatever reason something wasn't clicking so i think my biggest nightmare is probably that is not not making that connection like i should be okay because i mean at the end of the day that's what we're here for is to connect with people and i, I i'm not saying you have to be funny in order to connect with people but like <laughs> Can can someone develop a, a personality, or is that naturally ingrained in someone? Yeah, I think. I mean, look, you either look. We know some people just have dull personalities. That's just the way it is, right? Yeah. Some people are just they just <laughs> they're just they're just not a they're just not going to get on the radio. <laughs> they're just not right. Yeah. Um. And usually those people don't want to be on the radio. They don't want to be on TV or they don't want to be on a stage. And that doesn't, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um. But I think, yeah, absolutely. You can develop that personality and, and can develop. If someone's working with you, develop how to communicate effectively um, and how to be, because it's all just about being real. And for whatever reason, people get on the radio and we still hear it today for people that have been doing this for years. And all of a sudden that microphone turns on and they turn into this used car salesman, you know, <laughs> it's just pukey, whatever, or that people come out of school or broadcasting school and it's, you've got to do this big show, just be yourself. And I think that's a, that's a weird thing to learn is that how to be yourself and be comfortable with yourself, but it can definitely, I think be learned. Yeah. Do you have any uh, pet peeves with personalities or podcasts? I, I don't know how to narrow that down, but I'm sure there are a few that stick out. <laughs> uh, it's someone that's been on the management side of this business for a long time. There, there are a few things that I hear personalities do that, that make me cringe. Um, when I hear people, and this is half this, this randomly this comes and goes. It seems to come and go in spurts. It seems to be that, that it's a trend that we'll hear a bunch of people say this particular phrase and then it'll go away for a while. Uh, but your boy, your girl. I hate that. I hate people saying it's your boy or it's your girl. So I, I've always hated that. Um, I hate the phrase hump day. I hate the phrase hump day. Mm. Um, actually, uh, Miss E-Class will probably tell you from from when we worked together at the beat that that was one of the th there was a list of things they weren't allowed to say on the air and that was one of them <laughs> okay. um was hump day um but i but but one of my biggest pet peeves is also just people kind of going back to being real it's just people not being real right it's i, I don't i don't know if poser is the word but but trying to be something they're not I mean, you can tell when someone's trying to be cool or trying to do this, that just that cringe factor freaks, just be yourself. We all have interesting lives, you know, no yeah. matter how boring you think your life is, it's still pretty interesting. Just well, be you and share it. And, and another thing I think some folks run into or, and I, I have, I've ran into this is you'll have maybe someone you idolize in the business, like Howard Stern, Bob and Tom, and you try to be Howard yeah. Stern. And it's like, you can't be that person. You know, you, Howard, even a good imitation is, you know. Howard Stern's already taken. Yeah. That's already taken. There's he, his, that role's already gone. That role's already gone. Yeah. Bob yeah. and Tom's role's gone. And and there's been a, there's been a few syndicated shows that have been called like the cheap Bob and Tom. I'm not going to, I don't want to mention them, but, but you, they're supposed to sound like Bob and Tom. And there's even kind of the laugh track behind it, like the, you know, the, the the laughing that happens with Bob and Tom. It's the shows are set up the same way. And and usually they're for stations that are will put them on that are trying to compete with that show. And Howard Stern's the same way, that shock jock. There was all those 
kind of wannabe shock jocks that popped up when he was in his heyday. Yeah. His role's taken. And and the same is true on the talk side. Like whether you agree with his political stance or not, Rush Limbaugh, who in his later years of life, I think said some of the stupidest things came out of his mouth, but he was able to communicate with his audience and connect with his audience on a really level that nobody else had. Really? Yeah. I mean, whether we agree with him politically or not, he still had that gift to be able to do that. And he got people riled up. And so you look at all these kind of wannabe Rush Limbaugh's right now, you know? Well, I, I, I saw a show recently with him. It was either dark side of the nineties, dark side of the two thousands. And it talked mm-hmm. about Rush Limbaugh. And I don't know if you've run into this, but a lot of folks that liked Rush were, lonely truck drivers that don't have someone necessarily in the truck to talk to. I mean, have you had any obsessive fans? I mean, has that been an issue at all? I don't know if obsessive fan would be the word. Um, I've definitely had people that felt they knew me. um, Maybe a little more than they did. Um, And I, I take that as a compliment, A, because that means I'm doing my I'm doing my job communicating. Um, when I was with Cumulus before I came here to Houston, uh, I did do a morning show in Shreveport, but I was also on the air in Lexington, Kentucky, and in Boise, Idaho. And then I was on the Westwood One Network, which had me on at night on about 60 or 70 radio stations across the country. And it was mostly in very small towns in the middle of nowhere. Um and I would randomly get messages. I, I could always tell when I had said something that had worked because I would randomly get messages on my Instagram or Facebook at 10 or 11 o'clock at night or at one or two o'clock in the morning if it was now hitting the West Coast. Or I think we had a station in Alaska too. So that's, mm. you know, six hours, you know, behind in time um, or ahead in time or whatever. Um, and usually you get the same people that connect with you over and over again. I've only had one instance where it maybe got a little too weird <laughs> and, and somebody took it a little too far. Um, I've had the, your voice is sexy or, Oh my God, I love your voice kind of thing. But like I said, there's been one or two times where and it, one time was a male, one time was a female where maybe the, the, the compliments got a little too explicit. Um, but, but none of the crazy stories like I've heard of, you know, people showing up at the houses or at the jobs. And we actually had someone when, uh, in the building we used to work in that um, had a, a listener that constantly she would get random flowers in the building. And there was a little note at the front desk. If so-and-so shows up, call the police. Like, so, mm-hmm. And I think the, I think females in our industry get it a lot more um, from lonely guys that yeah. develop crushes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. I, I've, I've seen it happen. No, I, I, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, <laughs> but, it, but it's also, you got to remember too, that the majority of those people are, majority are harmless. Obviously, if it gets taken too far, it can get scary, but the majority are harmless. And, and the, it kind of goes back to, we all just want someone to connect with and talk to, right? I mean, I'm not defending stalking by any means, but we all just, <laughs> yeah. we all just want somebody to connect to and talk to. And so again, it kind of goes back to that it's your job to connect and it's your job to make the, you know, for, for a listener to think you're a friend. So if I've done that and and there's someone that sends me a DM several times a week, which I, I do get from a few different, I mean, I know, I know as soon as I see the name pop up, Oh, that's so-and-so I've never met so-and-so, but that's so-and-so I've connected with him or her. Okay. And that's my job. And you're you're doing your job, man. That's yeah, that's important. that's what we're here for. Because <laughs> everybody, you can hear the the Sabrina Carpenter song that my station is playing currently, can be heard on several different stations in Houston, and can be heard on several different platforms, and on YouTube and Spotify and everywhere. Um, but but Jay Michaels is only on one place. <laughs> um, have you talked to any celebrities on your shows before? Yes, I don't really do a lot of interviews. Um, I I think a lot of times, like when we do on air interviews, I mean, unless it's somebody major, a lot of people usually tune out unless they're a big fan of so and so. 
Um, but we started to do a lot more kind of like what we're doing right now, just a lot more of like zoom stuff and, yeah. um, cutting it up into shorts to, to post on social media, because then, you know, if there is a big fan of so-and-so they're going to seek it out. Um, yeah. one that we did here recently that, that did really well. And that was actually really, um, inspiring. And I know we got some messages back that it was really inspiring was with David Archuleta and it was, you know, it's funny. I and mean, he hasn't had a hit and he's only had one. Um, but but his story is so inspiring here recently. And it, so um, we did some stuff with him during Pride Month. And um, it was really him sharing more of like his coming out story and how his family reacted to it. And he grew up Mormon. So there was a, you know, there's a deep religious issue there too. And, and, uh, and I think people react well to that too, because they get to really see the person on camera and on social media and, and kind of see how they're interacting. And I don't like interviews. I think it's just, let's just have a conversation. You know, everybody right. can ask you the same question of why did you write that song? Or what were you thinking when you performed this song? So what do you think of Houston's culture? Is it inclusive and make you yeah, want to get out there? It's one of the coolest places I've ever, it's one of the hottest places I've ever lived. It's hot. It's, <laughs> it's oh my air conditioning God. is a must. Yeah. I it's would. a must. My grandmother, who lives in southern Indiana, asked wants to come visit, and um, she wanted to come visit in the you know in in August. And I was like, no, I don't think we should do that. And and she said, why? And I said, well, if you've ever wondered what it's like, what it feels like to be cremated, then you should come <laughs> visit. Um, so it's one of the hottest places to live. But no, it has one of the most inclusive cultures. It's one of the most diverse. I think it actually is listed as one of the most diverse cities in the country. Um, Population wise, it's it's I mean, it's always been a major city, but they're predicting that it'll be the third largest city in the country within 10 years and overtake Chicago. Um, the food scene's amazing. Obviously, yeah. you know, there's a, a large Hispanic influence. So, you know, the Mexican food's awesome. The Tex-Mex is awesome. But even outside of that, uh, we have a, a very large um, Asian population. So we have an, um, a Chinatown that has authentic Chinese restaurants. There's a very large Middle Eastern community here too, um, and so and I love Persian food. So one of the some of the best Persian food I've ever had um, has been here. Um, and then being so close to the Gulf, you know, we're we're so close to Galveston. It's just thirty minutes away. Um, you have access to amazing seafood as well. So yeah, it's 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 a really cool city. There's always something to do. Um, usually we do things in the fall or the winter outside. Although there's so many festivals and like events that happen in the summer. I'm like, why do you do this? It's a, it's literally 155 degrees outside. Like, yeah. can't we do this indoors? What's yeah. wrong with you people? Um, but it's, it's a fun city for sure. Jim Gaffigan said that uh, Indiana is the best place to get Mexican food. Uh, do you have a, like a go-to order of Mexican food that you get? You know? Uh. I will agree with him on that, first of all, <laughs> especially if you get into some of those small towns, uh, yeah. like the really small towns. Um, and if you walk into a Mexican restaurant in small town, Indiana, and there's no air conditioning and it's hot, you know, that's about to be the best food you've ever had in your life. Uh, there, There is a little place in southern Indiana that literally, I mean, it was hot as hell in there, but the food was so good. Um, I have two go-to orders and, and it depends on what mood I'm in. Okay. Uh, my my ex fiance uh, he is Hispanic. I almost said he was, but that would make him sound like he's dead, and he's not dead. Um, he is Hispanic, and so he used to cook uh, eggs and chorizo every weekend, and that was the first time I'd ever had eggs and chorizo with potatoes and the beans and all that. Um, so that's become like a go to order. Okay. Uh, chorizo is one of my favorite things, uh, even though it's salty as hell. Um, but other than that, I'm very southern indiana white boy when it comes to mexican food so it's going to be like a chimichanga which i know if you go to you know if you're at an authentic restaurant and order a chimichanga they kind of look at you like you're at taco bell but um <laughs> unless it's tex-mex I mean, chimichanga is a very tex-mex thing but uh beef and cheese chimichanga with queso on it oh my god there you go i like that that's, that's the cool. best that's the best mexican you know food fat meal in the world like that's your cheat day meal all right. Uh, you ready for the rest of the JBK on air questionnaire to get to know more about you? You ready? Yes, let's do it. All right. Pancakes or waffles? 
pancakes. Okay. Pancakes with extra syrup. You got chocolate chips or fruit in them too? Nope. Or, okay. Well, don't Point. screw it up. Just butter and syrup. <laughs> okay. There and it's go. got to drown in syrup. I, I agree. That's that's a good point. I want diabetes when I eat the pancakes. <laughs> uh, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No. You're like mad if somebody makes a choice. Am I, am I what? You're like upset if somebody's like, I need pineapple on half of this. I think that's, no, that, no. Why would you do that? I'm Why? Not, I'm not like offended. Some a lot of, every time you put I pineapple say, on pizza? I'll put it on half. Yeah. For me. I'm just, well, it's been good talking to you. I'm going to go ahead and go now. Hey, <laughs> a little sweet to go with the salty, man. That's all I'm saying. Ugh, no, that's it doesn't it belong there. No. Okay. Mm -mm. Fair no. enough. Um, is, is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes or no? No, it's a hot dog. It's its own category. It's its own category. Okay. Uh, what toppings do, uh, do belong on a hot dog? On a hot dog? Yeah. Or a pizza? Do both. Let's do that. Favorite pizza topping and then like favorite... Favorite uh, pizza topping? I'm very basic. It's pepperoni and extra cheese. Um, vegetables don't belong on pizza. If I want vegetables, I'll eat a salad. <laughs> Pizza is carbs. Um, All right. And if and if they offer hamburger like or ground beef, ground beef and pepperoni on pizza, oh my god! But it's got to be like it can't be like a Pizza Hut kind of place. Like it's got to be like a or you know what? No, Pizza King's um, cr the the sausage that's all crumbly. There you that's go. That's really good. That's really I, good. I did Hot that. dog is just ketchup and mustard. Okay. Again, okay. I don't put vegetables on stuff that it doesn't belong on. So no Veg relish. For your hot dog. I mean, relish is kind of its own thing, but... Okay. No. No. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, what's your favorite sound as a person working in radio? My favorite what? Favorite sound. <clears throat> sound? Yes. I've never been asked that. Um... Oh, I, oh, wow. Uh, I got a good one for you. Being a basketball fan, I love the sound of a basketball swishing through a hoop. That's one of my favorite sounds. <laughs> I think the sound of the, the so I'm, I'm weird when it comes to like water. Like I don't go in the pool. I don't go in the beach. Um, th There's a whole reason for that that we can get into later, but the sound of like just the ocean and the waves and the, that I think that's just one of the most calming, peaceful, mm -hmm. relaxing sounds. And it's also like, you know, just going to a beach and looking at it and looking at the waves. It's just like kind of appreciating nature and how everything just is all I, I can get into like some like spiritual moments when i'm at a beach and you smell a, and you can and all, when you hear the waves you can almost smell the salt and you can just feel it so it, it would be like the, the ocean sounds uh when i went to turks and caicos last fall i took a lot of video of just being on the beach and and, and sometimes i will go back and listen to it uh because it's just it's yeah so i think that'd be my favorite sound you have a sound that you hate i do Nails on a chalkboard and uh, feedback too. I don't. I'm not. Yeah, the nails on the chalkboards. I know that's a horrible. That's a horrible sound. You just no, go away. <laughs> um, that would be one of them. Um, I also hate. I hate. I don't like bathroom talk, and so I hate bathroom sounds. And I know that some people like to use sound effects that sound like they're doing certain things in the bathroom, like very teenage boy humor. Um, those sounds gross me out. Okay. So yeah, that no. Fair enough. Um, Starbucks or Duncan? <sighs> That's not fair because <laughs> okay. they each serve their own purpose. Starbucks has a purpose from a couple of days ago through the end of the year and that is pumpkin spice and peppermint so and and even though everybody has a pep a pumpkin coffee right now starbucks has the original so 
from mid August to the end of December, I'm going to say Starbucks. Um, but all year long, I'm going to say Duncan because the Duncan cold brew, just plain black cold brew is legit. Okay. Are you a donut person too? You need, you need a donut to go. Not really. With no. Okay. But they're called, look, you get their the straight black cold brew, no sugar, no whatever. And, um, and this is what I do every morning is I'll, I'll, and I've been buying the cold brew at home so I can make it myself, but then you pour one of like the pre-made protein shakes in it. And so you're kind of creating a dupe coffee drink because it has no sugar and it's got protein. So, but yeah, they, um, they each serve their purpose. Since you're a mentor of mine in the entertainment industry, Thank uh, you. Let's do best yeah, piece mentors. of advice uh, you've received, sir. Best piece of advice? Yes. <clears throat> always be yourself. I know I've mentioned that a few times today. But I think always be yourself. And it kind of goes back to, you, you mentioned this earlier, Jimmy, of, of Howard Stern uh, or Bob and Tom. They're already taken. There's already a Howard Stern. There's already, there's already a Bob and Tom. There's already a, a, a Delilah. There's... But we know, you know, these are these icons in our business, right? Or Orion Seacrest. Don't try to be, you can, you can take what they've done and make your own out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you want to be a little bit more of um, an in-your-face personality, per se, like a Howard Stern, I think you can use that as a foundation, but to try to imitate them, people are going to see right through that. So always be yourself. And um yeah, I think that'd be my biggest advice is always be yourself no matter what, because what what you think is your weakness or your downfall, somebody else is going to be inspired by and connect with you on. Okay. Well, Jay, um, I, I've been in the entertainment industry. Uh, I'm going to be 30 in September, about 15 years. Uh, and awesome. you're uh, you're one of the most entertaining and, and nice folks that I've ran into. So thanks oh, for being thank on you. the show and uh, for documenting an episode. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was, it was fun. Thank you. It was an honor. Um, how can folks reach out to you and listen to you too? So I am on uh, Mix 96.5 in Houston. Uh, we are at, uh, on the Odyssey app. So you can download the Odyssey app. Uh, A-U-D-A-C-Y is how you spell it because nobody knows how to spell it. Um, and favorite uh, Mix 96.5 Houston. And then you can connect with me on uh, Instagram at jmichaels123. Jay Michaels, ladies and gentlemen. Folks, uh, to hear this episode and all others, make your way to linktree.com slash JBK on air for all things related to the show at JBK on air on all social media platforms. And if you feel compelled to donate to the program, we would appreciate it as always with the link in the description. Until next time, have a great day and a better tomorrow.